رباه عفوك إني للنور مدة يداي نزعت أسرار قلبي وجبت ألقي أسايا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فنأسق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first, the last, the one we worship and worship alone. We bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is the last and final messenger sent to humanity. I remind us all to have taqwa of Allah, to be conscious of Allah openly and secretly, and to not die except in a state of submission to Allah, except in a state of Islam. Recently, the Los Angeles Unified School District implemented a ban on cell phones for all students. This is the second largest school district in the country. They said during school hours, no students can be on their phones. The Surgeon General has issued a warning to Congress and has said that social media should have a warning label the same way tobacco and alcohol does. You know those labels that says under, this may cause uh, you know, birth defects if taken by pregnant women or cancer or whatever else, those labels, he said that should be on social media because we have so much evidence of what is happening that it only makes sense. And these, of course, are all both related to technology. Technology is something that we use as a means of communication. And as human beings, we were created to be able to have communication with each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as such. Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allamahu al-bayan. Allah is the one who is the most merciful, who created mankind, and He taught him how to communicate, taught him speech. He taught Adam alayhi salam. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرْضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَا أُولَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ He taught Adam alayhi salam the names of everything. So what does that mean? The names of everything. That means the names that we have of objects and things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam. So he taught him that a chair is a kursi, for example, or a tree is shajara, or whatever other words are used in different languages. So he taught him the names of everything, and then this spread throughout humanity. Now another opinion states that he taught him all of the languages of the earth, and then of course that spread throughout humanity. Perhaps the first uh, opinion about that he taught the names of everything is more correct, wallahu alam. But the point is, he taught him the names of things so we can communicate. And technology is a medium for us to communicate. That's what it is. It allows us to be able to communicate in ways that we perhaps could never have imagined before. But like many things, there needs to be checks and balances and boundaries. Now a lot of times we'll say things like, hey, Islam is not anti-technology. I think this is because we're colonized in the mind, so we have to say things like this. Basically, for many of us, we were in an experimental generation when it came to technology. So let's just kind of see what happens. So the millennial generation is the first generation that is considered the technology, like they grew up on this stuff. And this is where we really get a lot of the data from. Now they're... The, the last of them were born in 1996. And what's interesting is the, uh, the first iPhone came out in 2007. So there was a bit of time even for the eldest ones. And of course now, there's, everything is out. But 
they were sort of a guinea pig generation. It's like, let's see what happens. Well, now we're seeing what's happened. And what we're seeing is that there must be limits and boundaries and checks. Otherwise, it's going to be detrimental to all of society. Now, Islam is not anti-technology. Progress needs to happen. Nobody came to Jummah today on a horse. Although that might fix our parking problem. But most of us don't ride around on camels. Right? If we do, it's like an exotic thing when we visited somewhere. We ride in cars. Uh, you know, we don't handwrite books when we need a book. It's printed now. You can get things in PDF forms. So, th this is progress. But Islam doesn't change fundamentally the values, the morals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said today, I've completed my religion for you and my favor upon you. And I am pleased that Islam is your religion. The religion is going to change every three years, four years, five years? Of course not. The basic morals and values stay the same, but other things progress. So it's important to have some balance in this conversation. There are things uh, for technology which are good, and we need to acknowledge those, such as, in theory, technology saves us time. Okay, so you can order your groceries and you can just go inside and pick them up. Now, you don't even need to go in the aisle. You don't want to go in the aisle, just order them for curbside. You don't have to go inside. You don't even want to drive, just have them delivered to your house. That's it. You don't need to go to the bank. I went to the bank recently and I said, I need to get something done. They said, uh, go and do it online. <laughs> why, why am I here then? What's the point of this branch? Okay. So in theory, it's supposed to save us time. And with that save time, then we do things that are not just, of course, uh, spiritually healthy, but just productive in general. So that save time is supposed to, in theory, give us more time for ibadah. That save time is supposed to give us more time to take care of our health. That save time should give us more time to just do productive things in general. Healthy habits, in theory. And so a technology allows us to do that. Technology allows us to keep family relations in ways that we could have never even dreamed of before. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَصِلْ رحمة. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, let him join or keep together their family relationships. And that is made much easier with technology. You can send a message to family across, halfway across the world, just checking in on how they're doing, saying Eid Mubarak. You can actually see them. This couldn't have been done before. You would go 10 years, you wouldn't see your family. You wouldn't hear their voice. And now, we're able to do that. And, and a simple little thing, like sending a, you know, a text of congratulations or something when they graduate and they're living in another state or somewhere else, that goes a long way. It's like, oh, this person cared enough. And it's very easy to do that. You don't have to sit and handwrite a letter and then put it in the mouth of a pigeon. And then the pigeon goes and you, you hope it gets there. You know, we don't have to do that. So technology has allows us, allowed us to be able to stay in touch with family. It's allowed us to stay in touch with our teachers. So in America, mashallah, we always have all kinds of interesting things coming up and challenges. So now we can communicate with them directly. Instantly. And then if we need to fix something, we can just do it again instantly. So again, across the world, you can get the answer to something which would have normally taken who knows how long. So this is certainly uh, a benefit of technology. Technology also allows us to accrue good deeds in ways that we couldn't do before. So you see an advertisement for some, they're building some masjid in Norway, and you say, okay, let me donate a hundred bucks. And that will become sadaqa jariya, charity which continues after we die. You're probably never going to go anywhere near Norway or that masjid or know who's praying in that masjid, but because of technology, we were allowed to benefit from it. And some of us will come on the Day of Judgment with good deeds, and we won't know where they came from. 
And then we'll be reminded, well, you sent this to this person who was in need somewhere over here and somewhere over there. So these are blessings of technology, and we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there has to be checks and balances. And it's not a free-for-all. And now it's more complicated because we add in artificial intelligence. And that's why a lot of these leaders, and they're not coming from a perspective of spirituality or deen or anything, but they're like, maybe we need to put a pause on this and see. Because it's pretty frightening what can be done with some of these tools. But there definitely needs to be checks and balances and limits. And the greatest concern I have for the technological advances are the effect it has on the heart. أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةً إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلْحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْ The Prophet said there's a piece of flesh in the body if it is sound then the entire body is sound and if it's corrupt then the entire body is corrupt and what is that? That is the heart. Now the physical heart is actually difficult to get to. You can't just go in and take someone's heart. The rib cage protects it. You really got to work to get there physically. But spiritually, it's a lot easier to corrupt it. And there are gateways and openings that are there which come in. And a lot of times, the technology is being used to corrode the heart. So we see things that directly affect the heart. Jealousy is something which becomes widespread on social media when people see others living lives and they think, well, why can't I live that life? How come I don't have that? Why do they have to have, the ha have, have, to have that? And people have been, they post everything and anything. It's like, what is the purpose? I, I get it. Every now and then you put some stuff on there. But every single thing? Or like every... Everything that shouldn't be, not everything should be public news. So that leads to jealousy. And it's rampant. And even the secular studies show this. So this is something very serious. It attacks the lust in the human being. This is something we're trying to get under control. But we're exposed to images and images and all kinds of things that could not be imagined before. And this corrupts the heart. And now what I'm seeing is young couples come in and all of the things that generally the husband has seen in middle school and high school and college, 10, 15 years, now it's directly affecting the marriage. This is a negative of technology. And that's why there needs to be checks and there needs to be balances. And if there isn't, then we're risk, risking corrupting our heart. And just as it can save us time, it can also completely waste our time. So sometimes, all these things we're doing, we don't even leave the house for anything. But we still like, I don't have any time. Because we were just scrolling. Right? Parents will say, I have a screenager. But the reality is, it's not just the screenagers, it's all of us. It is not relegated just to one group of people. To do so would be, being, would be to be dishonest. I see people now in their 60s and 70s who used to read all the time, now they never read. They're just always on the screen. And so it's really easy to say, oh, well, these kids now, they don't do this and that. You're doing the same thing if you were growing up in this time. So this is why the checks need to be made there. And a lot of these things, when they talk about increased anxiety and depression and all this, from social media or overexposure, that's fine, but as Muslims we have a greater purpose. And if our, our spiritual heart is corrupted, then it's, that's going to affect everything in our life. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله عليه وسلم. When you, you know when you read all all fatwas, people ask like, is it permissible to watch television? And in the fatwas they'll say, well, the the uh, TV screen it's a neutral tool. If you watch good it's good. If you watch bad it's bad. Maybe that was the case back then. That's not the case now. Technology is not neutral. 
These tech companies are not neutral. They have agendas. They have certain ways that they think. They are using the technology sometimes for the worst of things, like indiscriminate bombing in Gaza, for example. They will steal data, right? Just look at these congressional hearings. Many of them start out with good intentions, but then it gets corrupted because it's about the profit. So they are not neutral. Don't think that technology is neutral. And so therefore, we need to put limits on it. So what are some practical things we can do? I don't know if we can put an age, but we can certainly say that nobody under 14 should have a smartphone. Statistics say that about 53% of 10 to 12 year olds have a smartphone. You want to destroy your child's life, give them a smartphone when they're seven and eight years old. There's no reason that any child should have access to that. And I don't know, I was interested to know at, at the, the Islamic schools in the area, how many of them have bans on cell phones during school hours? I wonder if any of them do. We should be leading this effort, not just waiting for somebody else to do it. There's no reason that anyone should have one. Now, that doesn't solve the problem completely because your son's going to go to school and other people are going to have it. So now what? So this is why we have to teach principles. I said, look, the boys in your class and your teammates and your friends, they're going to be watching things that you know in your heart you shouldn't be watching. We have to teach principles. Because you and I, we, no one can keep up with technology. It moves too fast. There's no way. Them not having access themselves helps, but it doesn't solve the entire problem. So there needs to be that conversation about, you're going to see this. Your daughters need to, you need to have a conversation about what is beauty, what is not beauty. What, you're going, what are you going to see? What are the standards? What are you being told as a role model? These are things that need to be explained. Because not having the device, while helpful, it doesn't solve the problem. Completely. And if your kids go to a school, most Muslim kids statistically go to public schools. Why can't we go to the public schools as parents and say, we don't want cell phones during school hours? This isn't a difficult task. It's not like they're not going to learn it. But you know who knows this? All the, uh, the tech CEOs who send their kids to low technology Waldorf school. That's who knows it. They don't even send it. People that design these things. One of the Google executives, his daughter was 30. Like she's never been on Google. Why is that? Because they know the power of it. There's no reason that a seven and eight year old needs access to a search engine. If they really need to search something, they can come to you and you can help them. It's easy to give up. Some parents will say, I don't want them to miss out. Okay, what, you don't want them to miss out? Then why don't you uh, have them smoke marijuana? You don't want them to miss out. Why don't you have them drink alcohol? You don't want them to miss out. These things arguably might be more dangerous than both of those things. Not that those things aren't. But what is it? Oh, I don't want them to miss out. No, you want to give them the tools to make the right decisions when they are older. And for those that are older, the teenagers and older, you're not little kids. You can regulate it yourself. I may have mentioned this here. I was speaking to a brother. He was born, I think he would be Gen Z now. He's not even the millennials. Millennials are old news now. The generation after. He's like, he was talking to me. He's like, you know, we saw how it messed all you guys up. So we're more cautious when it comes to our technology. I said, subhanAllah, the hope for the future. Right? But there must be checks and there must be balances. And that includes our use as well as future generations. So if we can just do that, I know this is summertime, families, there's more family time, more people are at home. We must put checks and balances on the technology we use. We have to understand the reality of what's going on, what's out there. And only then and then can we protect ourselves and ultimately our hearts. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to allow us to see the truth.